are you? I'm doing great and I hope you are too. <laughs> hey guys and welcome back to Creeped Out with Kate. I hope you guys are doing amazing. You may have already seen my Get Ready With Me video. I made it today, Wednesday, for you to watch tomorrow, Thursday, which is probably not tomorrow for you because you're watching this video on Saturday even though I filmed it on today, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> So now that we know the days of the week, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna try and make this video a tad bit shorter since that get ready with me video was a bit long. Um, thanks for watching anyways. <laughs> so today we're gonna be talking about Marie Delphine Lavari. Um, she is also known by Delphine McCarty or McCarthy, um, Marie Delphine Blanc, um, and you know, most recently or lastly, uh, Marie Delphine Larry, because that was her third husband's name and the one she died with. Um, Delphine was born in 1787 in Ireland. Uh, shortly after her birth, her parents migrated from Ireland to America, specifically to New Orleans. Louisiana or New Orleans, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato, leave me alone. <laughs> um, so she lived a typical rich white life. Um, her parents were extremely wealthy, so much so that she was gifted by them um, multiple plantations. I know one was indigo and I didn't find out what the second one was for, what they were farming or what the plantation was. Um, anyways, um, in uh, Delphine's early years, of course, she gets married once. Somehow her husband mysteriously dies. It's never said how or why he died. Um, obviously, we can take a wild guess. Maybe there's a Black Widow situation going on, especially because a couple years later, she gets married a second time and that guy mysteriously dies too. Um, nobody really knows what's going on. Um, you know, disease was really prevalent during this time. And so there was honestly a number of reasons that those guys could have died. And no one really looked into it too much. Um, she did have a ton of money, so maybe that's why they didn't look into it. But that's just my guess. <laughs> um, anyways, again, Delphine's still in her early 20s by the time she marries her third husband. His name is Leonard Louis Lollery, hence where she got the last name Lollery. Um, his name is L cubed, LLL. -L -L. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, shortly after getting married, she acquires some land in a very famous part of New Orleans in the French Quarter or French Square. Um, the home is um, actually on a street called Royal. It's on Royal Street. Um, so they're just living their best life um, on this land um, that she purchased. A three-story mansion was built. It was lavish, no expense spared. And it also had a separate quarter attached for um, the slaves, for the servants. Um, it is a disgusting, atrocious part of our history. Um, but unfortunately, in the 17, 18 so on, so on, so on, hasn't even really stopped. Uh, slavery was a thing. Um, and she was a rich white woman after all. So of course she had many servants and slaves. Um, the Lullaries being rich and powerful, they were um, socialites in their town. So they were invited to many fancy parties, um, you know, lavish affairs. They threw fancy parties and they were very well known. Um, after just a little while of moving into what's known as the Lollary Mansion or the home on Royal Street, um, some rumors began to circulate about Delphine's mistreatment of her slaves. Um, whenever she was out in public, she was very careful to treat Black people with respect and kindness, of course, so as to not be suspected of the things she was doing. Um, anyways, um, you know, things went on and rumors kind of began to grow. 
they did get to the point where a lawyer was dispatched to her home to kind of talk about the basic rights and decencies she had to afford her slaves. Even though there were slaves during this time and it was grotesque, there was still some basic decencies she had to give them. So obviously clean living quarters, she did have to feed them and she couldn't be too inhumane to them. So like, you know, uh, not too bad of beatings. Um, it did not say specifically that you could not uh, beat your slaves, but it couldn't, you know, it couldn't be too bad. For example, um, you would be fined if they couldn't work a certain period of time. Um, you would then get an even heftier fine if they died um, and so on. So, you know, there were some repercussions, um, not really ones that made a difference, especially for the Lollaries as they had a ton of money. Um, Delphine in her early 20s was said to be worth about $2 million today. Um, in the 1700s and as a young woman to have that much money is just like eh, crazy. Um, so anyways, uh, moving forward, the lawyer visits the home, checks out the living conditions of the slave and says, we had a really great conversation. You know, I had a good time. I didn't see any of this supposed mistreatment or, you know, he thought was supposed at the time because he didn't see any evidence. Um, time goes on and things actually just keep getting worse. There are two suicides. The first is a man who, it doesn't uh, say why, I wasn't able to find out why, um, was being chased through the halls by threat of being whipped by Delphine. Um, and he actually, rather than withstand the beating or whatever she was going to give him. I, I think it obviously must have been worse than a beating. Um, he actually jumps out of the third story window, obviously to his death. Um, so what that means is that the beating that she was going to give him or whatever she was going to do was so bad that he thought that dying would be better. That's crazy to me. Um, that's not the only time. A second time, um, this time there is a story. There's supposedly a 12-year-old um, girl. She is brushing Delphine's hair. She happens upon a knot and therefore yanks Delphine's hair a bit. And apparently this sends Delphine into a spiling rage. She's now chasing the girl through the home with a whip. And again, rather than withstand the beating or whatever was going to happen to her, she climbs out the window onto the roof and proceeds to jump to her death. So another person is now wanting to die rather than be punished by Delphine. That says a lot about what she was probably doing. Um, you know, some time passes and um, after a lot of rumors and these two accounts of these suicides because of her, um... A police, an investigator is dispatched to her home to be like, you know, what the hell is happening? Two people, you know, killed themselves. What's happening, Delphine? Um, he, he does or they are said to do an examination. They do reach the slave quarters. And finally, they find that there are unfit conditions. The slaves are being uh treated very poorly i'm sure because they weren't being fed they were very malnourished and i'm sure that it showed um supposedly the living quarters were absolutely filthy having never been cleaned because the slaves were chained up when they were there and so they couldn't even they couldn't even clean if they wanted anyways there was you know supposedly rats and maggots and all kinds of other disgusting things that no one i mean no one should be made to live in um, anyways, so upon this discovery, Delphine is made to give up nine of her slaves. Um, so they're like, you know what, you're treating them badly. You can't, you obviously can't manage this many slaves. Give us nine. So those nine slaves are then forfeit and put up for auction. You would think that this is the end of the tyranny, um, forced upon these slaves, but that's not the case. Um, they're unfortunately purchased back by Delphine's family members um, and then given back to her. So these slaves that had thought that they were 
free from this torturous I'm calling her torturous because she was a mistress and she tortured don't know if it's a real word but anyways they thought they were free and now they are being given back to her because they had such strong holds influence and money in this town um anyways uh, a while down the road um as they often did the Lollaries throw a party. Um, everyone is in attendance because this is a rich, power fam uh, rich and powerful family. And at the end of the day, attending parties like this, you know, it can lead to status and connections and blah, blah, blah. So everyone's partying, having a great time. Uh, during this time, it said that um, Madame Lollary did uh, start to chain her cook to the stove. Uh, for fear that she would leave and also just to make sure that she was always present whenever she wanted something to eat um there was also some um there was a thought or a um i can't use my brain right now a guess there was a possibility i guess that uh Lullary started to chain her slaves up because shortly before this time there were many slave revolts. Slaves were beating their masters and killing their masters to get away. Like, who wouldn't, you know? Um, and so, um, because it was believed that Delphine's mom and some family members may have died this way, um, it's believed that that might be part of the reason for her uh, extreme, disgusting mistreatment of Black people and slaves. Um, no one really knows if that was a reason because it's not like we got to ask her, um, but it doesn't really matter. It was disgusting either way. So anyways, let's move on. So sometime during this party, a massive fire breaks out. The home is just engulfed. And so then, of course, all the party goers, they leave the home, but they actually continue to party outside. The food is brought outside, the drinks are brought outside. In New, in New Orleans, a party doesn't stop for anything. And that's what happened in this case as well. Um, so they're partying outside. The police show up, the fire department show up, of course. They're checking to make sure that everyone's evacuated. They find the cook. She's still chained to the oven or something in the kitchen. It doesn't say specifically. And at this time, she admits that she set the fire as a suicide attempt because she was afraid that Delphine would take her up to the top floor. Um, the top floor was a place where slaves were taken and they never returned. Um, you know, after, of course, more due diligence and doing whatever they were, you know, supposed to do, making sure everyone's evacuated, they finally get to the slave quarters and they attempt to open up the door to check on the slaves. And this is where the accounts get a little confusing. Um, there's mixed information. Uh, some uh, things that I looked up said that uh, Leonard was there. He had the key. He refused to open the door. Um, obviously, because he would have been exposed if he did. That's probably why. I'm sure that's why. Anyways. Um, and then there are some um, uh, sources that say that the Lullaries had already fleed the mansion at this time. Because obviously they knew that they were going to get caught and, you know, be in trouble. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my brain's not working anymore. I keep forgetting like basic words, but whatever. You guys know what I mean. Um, long story short, the door's broken down and the police eventually are able to enter the top floor. And when they get there, it is a gruesome sight. Um, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a disclaimer right now, give you the opportunity to leave because to be honest, just reading about this, I like it made me like need to throw up hearing about some of the things that um, occurred um, and it's it's a lot. A lot happened. Um, so if you guys have a weak stomach or you just don't want to hear about some really graphic, disgusting um, things that happened peace out go ahead and go ahead and leave <laughs> go ahead and watch a old video wait for the next video whatever 
Um, anyways, so what they saw when they got into the room was about seven to nine um, different slaves. There were slaves that were hung from the ceiling by their neck and their extremities and lower halves were so heavy because they'd been there for so long limp that their stomach or their middle regions were starting to separate from each other and you know open of course there were like openings slices because of the weight of the the hanging part of their body um there were uh slaves with their eyes sewn shut some with their mouths sewn sh shut after um feces or excrement were stuffed into their mouths um there were um slaves that were mutilated um had arms and legs cut off and placed elsewhere on the body there were uh, sex reassignment experiments where the genitals of one sex was removed and replaced onto the other you guys know what i'm trying to say um there were um people with holes in their head and spoons in their head so that uh, madame lalaurie could stir their brains um there was a woman who had every bone in her body broken and stuffed into a tiny little box um there was another woman whose bones supposedly were broken and reset and rebroken and reset until she resembled a crab um there was another um lady who was cut from neck um to her you know um uh why can't i think of private parts um and then her intestines were removed and wrapped around her tightly like a corset um there was people in cages and not everyone was dead um unfortunately there were people who had been there for months and were still alive begging to be put out of their misery understandably so after being in a situation like that i really i don't know how you would cope with that how you could come back from some of those things from any of what was done to be honest and i think i'd be ready to go as well um anyways sadly as if this weren't enough as if this terrible atrocious mistreatment um mutilation um torture wasn't enough they were then put through additional um emotional torture they were moved to a nearby jail until authorities can figure out what to do with these people do we i don't know do we actually put them out of their misery like they asked and like what might be the humane option do we try and treat them take them to the hospital um you know trying to figure out what to do during this time disgustingly they allowed visitors and viewers it's said that from the time that they got there to the time that um, authorities found out what to do over 4,000 people had passed by the jail cell to look at these slaves that terrible things happened to I don't know if it was to confirm you know the story did this really happen I don't know if it was out of curiosity because um, the human body was a little bit of a mystery during this time. They didn't have modern medicine and modern surgery, so there were a lot of accounts of strange experiments and um, grave disturbances. Um, bodies were taken from graves and examined um, out of morbid curiosity. Um, anyways, um, after this, a mob, rightfully so, broke out um, and they went to the Lollary Mansion on Royal Street in the French Quarter and just destroyed it, ransacked it. Obviously, they didn't want this terrible torture mansion in their town. They didn't want to have to pass by it and see it after they found out what happened there. I totally get that. And I don't know, maybe I'd even participate if I was in that case or in that situation. I mean, I don't know. Thank God I'm not or I wasn't or I won't be, hopefully. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, 
So they, they're, you know, destroying the home, obviously, probably holes in the wall. Um, they burn it. Um, anyways, by the end, by the time authorities get there and break up the mob, there's little left than the walls, the frame, you know, part of it has been burned down. And so eventually the whole thing's demolished. By this time, by the time the mob had gotten there, the Lullaries had already fleed New Orleans. They'd gotten on a boat. They'd sailed all the way to Paris to escape their fate, to escape, you know, the punishment that they are, that they deserve, you know? Um, I was thinking, like, what punishment do they deserve? Um, I'm not really an eye for an eye person. Um, I'm not really the kind of person that says, well, they did this, so they should get that done to them too. Um, I think if I were an authority, I'd handle it with a little bit more grace because at the end of the day, if I subject a person to the same thing that another one's in trouble for subjecting someone to, then I'm just as low or just as bad almost as that original person. So I think a swift beheading, um, I don't think they had a lethal injection then, but I think just, let's just kill these people. Get them out of society. Let's be rid of them. Um, I think that that, I think that that would be an appropriate punishment. Um, but I'm not, I'm not law enforcement for a reason. So never mind. Let's forget that part. <laughs> um, oh, this is not funny. Sorry, guys. Um, anyways, they're in Paris. Um, first, um, in true Delphine fashion, um, or I don't know, you know, in, you know, in her pattern, <laughs> um, her husband dies first of mysterious circumstances. And then a lot later, Delphine eventually passes away. Um, she doesn't actually die until 1849. Um, so she had a, a pretty, a fairly long life. Um, and supposedly she just died in Paris. Um, there is a plaque or a grave site in New Orleans, um, saying, you know, here lies, uh, Delphine, uh, Lalaurie, formerly known as Delphine McCarthy or McCarthy. Um, it says, you know, when she died and when she lived and blah, 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 like a normal plaque or a normal tombstone. So um, no one really knows if she really died in Paris and maybe this was just um, a tribute to her, maybe made by a family member so they would have somewhere to visit um, or if she actually left Paris and she went back to New Orleans eventually and actually died in New Orleans. Um, nobody really knows. Um, but that's today's story. I don't, I never really know what to say. Like, I just told you guys this terrible thing and now I'm like, bye, have a great weekend. <laughs> hope you guys are doing great. Like, obviously, I do hope you guys are doing great and I do hope you have a great weekend. Um, but, you know, that's what happened. Um, I'm so excited because the next Saturday that we have is going to be in October. It's the spooky time. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of baking going on. I was going to tell you guys that I'm going to bake every week, but I can't guarantee that. I don't know for sure. I know that there's going to be more baking than usual, but I don't know if it's going to be every single week. Um, stick around to find out, guys. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, you subscribe, encourage your friends to subscribe, tell your mom and dad, tell your grandparents, make your dog a YouTube, and then ask him to subscribe. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Bye!